Hey everybody, <clears throat> today we are going to learn how to do some techniques for project one, the old to new photo switcheroo. Uh, we're going to start with restoring an old photograph. Now I have this old photograph here that I found off the internet. I am asking that you guys do not use this one since this is our demo photograph. Uh, all the techniques I show you will obviously be um, usable in any photograph you choose. Uh, also, if you notice, this is a good amount of damage for your photograph. I don't want to see any less damage than this, and absolutely no, you know, if you try to get more damage, that's fine, but having a lot more damage than this can be really uh, tricky when you're trying to uh, do this assignment. <clears throat> now, the first, uh, the other thing I want you to see is the image size. I'm going to go to image, image size, and you're going to see that it's well over a thousand pixels, and it's actually at 300 dpi. So the resolution is high, the pixels are high, this is a great image. We can get, uh, get working here. All right, when I start a project, what I normally do is I basically drag my file to the uh, new folder and make a copy. And the reason I do this is I'm going to call this a ridge. And basically I want a backup in case anything goes wrong. I'm also going to make a new group. So I'm going to go down and create a new group. And I'm going to call this Originals. Now you guys will learn quickly, I do not spell very well. You'll just have to deal with it. So what I'm going to do is actually drag one above the Originals. And go ahead and drag, double click and unlock this one. Call it Backup. And drag that into the box. Now I'm going to drag that right into the box, close that, turn off Originals, and I'm good to go. Now, once I have that, I want to make sure my picture is converted to CMYK. If you're doing this at home and you find that your file is not CMYK, perhaps it's RGB, you need to go to Image, Mode, and change it from RGB to CMYK. And that's what I've done here. <clears throat> now that that's done, what I'm going to do is continue to edit. And I'm going to do some um, cropping here, some selective cropping. So first I'm going to use my crop tool and I'm going to simply crop out some of this damage on the outside. We really don't need it. Um, it would be a pain to kind of clean that up. So as a time saving technique, we're good to go. Now what I like to do is instead of just cropping it right now, what I want to do is look up here at my toolbar and you can see we have a delete and hide button. I'm going to choose the hide option. This way, if we ever need to go back and access that material, it will be there. Once I have that, I can just simply hit the Enter key on my keyboard to activate the crop, and we have a decent crop. Okay, now we're ready to start cleaning this up. <clears throat> so what I can do is rename this one real quick and call it Crop, and I can begin by cleaning up some of these marks. So let's go through here. Let's do this, okay. and to clean up some of these, we can use a variety of tools. We're going to use our spot healing brush tool, which is right in here, our healing brush tool as well as our clone stamp tool. So I'm going to go ahead and clean these up, and I'm going to start with just the spot healing brush. And you can see this is actually a pretty quick tool and a really easy method to get this clean. So I would go over certain areas and, you know, notice I don't go and try to do it that way because what will happen is it will actually eat up a lot of my computer's resources and it doesn't always look that amazing. So work in small chunks, it will actually go faster than you think. And I'm going through here. Now let's get in on his face because that's kind of what we're going to focus on in coloring. Um, let me scroll down here. There we go. And the spot healing brush tool is very good for areas on the face because it does retain somewhat of a texture, which is really nice to have. So continue to go through here. If you see an area, you can just hit Command Z and that will go back. If you messed up or you think you've gotten a little overzealous with your, your uh, movement here. And I'm going to go through. Again, Control Z there and kind of clean up these cracks. You can see it actually goes very, very quickly. All these little dust particles, simply one click, and I'm good to go. 
So not too shabby. Again, you can see with this one tool, I'm getting a lot of this, uh, this work actually done. And it's really going quite fast. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now what I'm going to do here is pause the video for a second and get some of the majority of this work done since we don't want to have like a 20 minute video. So give me a second here and I'll be right back. Now what you can see I've done is, let me turn on the original crop here, is I've cropped out the majority of um, some of the cracks on the face. Now that was done destructively. What we can actually do is do this non-destructively. So for the rest of the cracks, I'm going to pause the video in a few seconds here to do those, but I want to show you what we can do. So to do this, I'm going to create a new layer. And I suggest you guys do this with all of your, your uh, cloning work and your spot healing brush work. And I'm going to call this touch-ups. Touch-ups looks good. Okay. Now, if I start cloning on this, you're going to get a pretty big error. It's not going to look like it's doing much. That's because this background actually is all white on the touch-ups uh, layer. So what we need to do is on touch-ups, make sure we hit the sample all layers button. And now what this will do is really quite cool. It will actually take all the layers underneath it and sample it. And what I'm going to do is kind of go over these rather quickly here. There we go. Looks good. Get that crack out of the way there. And what it's actually doing is sampling those layers and erasing them for us and keeping them on a separate layer. So if I mess up, if I don't think something's right, I can always go and erase those and get them out of my way rather quickly. So that's a really great resource. Now you'll notice I also didn't touch up some of these larger areas. For that, I'm going to use my stamp clone tool. And the same uh, way I'm going to do the sample all layers, here it's called use current layer and below. So I'm going to use the current layer and also the below layer. That's kind of the sample all layers. For this one, I just enlarge my brush. I'm going to sample a layer. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and it gives me a target. If I hold down the Alt key and click, I'm left clicking, that will load the brush with this area. And now what you can see is, you see the little crosshair? I'm actually sampling that area and I can get rid of some, some uh, of the uh, damage here. You want to do this in small batches. Again, I hold Alt to sample and I click. Because if I go too crazy, let's watch. Let's sample over here. You can see it will start bringing in the issues. So I'm going to hit Command Z here to get rid of that. And again, small areas. I'm using the current layer and below. I'm doing this non destructively because it's always going to be on that separate layer. So if I screw up, don't worry, it will be back. And I can get some of these areas. This is the Stamp Healing Brush tool really great tool. You guys are going to use this more often than not and uh, a really great method. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video again. Clone. I'm going to do this non-destructively now as you can see all, all my work here and I will be back with a clean nice image. Guys, I've cleaned up the majority of this image. It didn't take too long um, but maybe 15 minutes or so. But you can see quite the difference here. And then you want to avoid cloudy areas like this, so be very careful there. I use the Spot Healing Brush Tool as well as the Clone Brush Tool to get rid of some of these areas. Now I'm ready to start colorizing. So what I suggest you guys do is create a folder and I'm going to do, I'm going to call this folder Cleanup. And I'm going to drag, I'm going to hold Shift and grab both of these and drag those into the Cleanup folder. And this is a really important step because I basically want to keep these as reference, but I'm going to do something I like to call the Mega Flatten. Now the Mega Flatten is pretty neat because what the Mega Flatten will do is actually flatten all your material and keep all the history, but it will create a kind of a single image to kind of start working off of. Because we're going to start over uh, when we colorize this. So what I'm going to do is hold down Command, Alt, Shift, and then the E key. Now notice touch up is highlighted, just touch up, command, alt, shift, E. And that will create a new layer. And that's a single layer, and I'm going to drag it above cleanup, close cleanup. And you can see it's basically just my image. So I'm going to call this color ready. Now before it's really ready for color, we have one more thing we need to do with this. We need to make this black and white. So what we're going to do is go to image, 
adjustments desaturate and what that will do is make it a black and white image this is in a very important step um, the reason being is because we want to keep all the tonal values and we want to make sure that we don't get any of that orangey color messing with our uh, uh, files here while we do this now that we have that done what we need to do is get ready to color it and there's a couple things we can do here first is really basically we need to start making selections and as discussed in class there's multiple different ways of making a selection uh, we're gonna try to use a little bit of each of them in this tutorial and I'm not gonna go ahead and color this whole thing for you but what I'll do is make sure that you gotta you kinda get an idea of um, all the different selections we can use first I'm gonna start with the quick mask tool or if I hit Q on my keyboard now if you hit Q you'll notice well not much happens that's because it's based off black and white. If I hit the X key and start painting, you'll again look and say, well, you know, not much is going on. Well, what we want to do is make sure we have our brush selected. Now we're ready to go. So now that our brush is selected, because we were using the clone stamp, we want to make sure we're on the brush, and we hit Q on our keyboard, which we already have, or you can hit this button. You can see. If I double click, I want to set it to selected areas. And the reason being there is because um, masked areas will actually paint it away. So wherever I paint, it's going to select it. And we'll start here with this shirt because it's, it's rather big. And I'm going to go ahead and my opacity set low here. Let me turn this to 100 so you guys can see it. Go through and I'm going to just paint. Not getting on the edges just yet. Don't worry about the buttons or anything. I'm going to paint his shirt. His shirt will not be red unless later on you want to make it red, that's fine. But this is the best method for uh, quickly masking out an area. So we're going to do that. Notice I don't get too close to the edges here. I'll talk about that in a second. And when we have them, pretty good. I'm going to change my brush hardness, and that's why I don't get too close. The harder the brush is, the more uh, of a refined edge it will have, and that's what we want. We want a sharp edge sometimes, especially with this shirt. Um, we want a decently uh, sharp edge. Now, if you screw up, which I'll do on purpose here in a second, let's see. If I go whoop and kind of screw up there, don't worry. Simply switch your black and white, and if I hit X on my keyboard, it goes to white. If you don't have black and white, hit D, as in Dombrowski, on your keyboard, and you'll see that they uh, easily switch back and forth. And you can see, if I hit black again, there we go. It is foolproof. You can't mess up. You can always erase it using the uh, black and white key method. It's a pretty cool technique. You can see I have some on his ne uh, neck right here. I'm going to hit X and just paint right over. White will make it disappear. Hit X again. Black will show up on a quick mask. There we go. Again, keep hitting X until you get it exactly where you want it. Now once you have this selected, what we're going to do is actually uh, hit Q once more and you'll notice it creates a selection. And now we're ready to do something uh, to start coloring this piece. We're going to make a adjustment layer or an adjustment mask. With the marching ant tools going, like I have here, go to layer, new adjustment layer, and we're going to go ahead and do curves. When you click that, it's going to ask you what you would like to create, and I'm going to say shirt. You're going to always name your layers what they are. Use previous layer as a clipping mask. Basically this just says use color ready. Um, if I didn't check this, it could mess with cleanup and maybe the originals. Uh, so we're going to be safe and check that box. I'm going to hit OK. And you're going to see what you end up with, if I hold Alt or Option, is a mask. Now I can go back in here and color this. Simply get my brush. Notice I'm not in quick mask mode. And I can simply color in areas. I can make areas a little more sharp. Um, anything I really want. I can paint more black in areas. Let's say I missed an area. Just go in and cut that out. That's a great technique. And then once you're done, simply click on this mask. Make sure your 
adjustments there and you're ready to go. Now what, what happens here with an adjustment layer is you'll find an adjustments panel. If you go to window adjustments you can see that as well. In that adjustment panels this will allow us to control the curves. Now there's a very specific process you do of controlling curves and what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to start by clicking the word CMYK and I'm going to go to Cyan or Cayenne depending on how you say it and you'll notice when I move this bar watch what happens. Voila! We have color. Above the bar is more blue, below the bar is less blue. You can see it even gets more toward pink or red. So what I like to do is actually go to magenta next. I like to mix these colors and find a decent color shirt. Go to yellow. Now the one, one, the one color I don't really touch is black um, and that just mainly because it tends to wash it out. But you can see I can click anywhere on this line on any of these. I can go back and forth and add or subtract more tones. If you want to get rid of one, you just simply hit delete on it. But once I have the color that I like, I'm good to go. Now, what about these buttons? Most of the times you have a blue shirt, it probably doesn't have blue buttons. So what we're going to do is simply go back to our mask and I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to hold the option key key and click and what I'm going to do is let me zoom in and show you we want to erase this from our mask so that's in this area but that's really hard to guess if I start trying to erase that I may erase some of the shirt so what I'm going to do is highlight the mask now do you see the little box that's around it and I'm going to get my brush and in a mask white shows up black doesn't it's not like the quick mask it's kind of like the opposite and what I'm going to do is simply click on those buttons and I'm going to erase using the black kind of paint away the color that was on those buttons and this is the type of detail that will get you an A project now we got to change those buttons in, in a bit and actually colorize them but not too bad uh, color, color wise, wise here so pretty cool let's go ahead and do uh, Let's look at his lips and let's see if we can't colorize those. We're going to use another selection method. This time I'm going to use the pen tool. The pen tool is kind of cool because what it will do, you can make very small clicks. If you click and drag, it will actually create a bezier or a handle that you can see it curves the, uh, the uh, handle there and the, the curve that's actually being put on. This is creating something called a path and we're gonna kinda of follow the path. This takes a, you know, a couple tries to master, but once you follow the path, you'll notice this is not a selection. You actually have a paths menu. If you go to window and paths, and there you'll find your path that you just made. To make it a selection, you simply hit this button, or you can double click on the actual control path. That's sometimes I hit command click and it will work. If you don't wanna do that, again, I'm gonna hit command D to get out of that, I'm going to simply select the path and hit that there. At this point, you're ready to go again. Select Color Ready, go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Curves. Call it Lips. You guys kind of get a pattern here, right? I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go to CMYK. I'm going to go down to Magenta. Most lips are red. And I'm not going to give him lips like this and make him look like the Joker or something. But I'm going to simply kind of give him some lips that are somewhat red maybe kinda of take away some of that redness here maybe add some blue or take away some blue now what you'll notice here is notice that this mask is actually pretty sharp the pen tool will do that the pen tool I'm gonna to hold uh, in command D here I'm gonna hold option and click on the lips it does create a harsh mask where you could see with the uh, quick selection tool, I used a softer brush, so it was a lot lighter. So what we're gonna do here, and this is what I tend to do here, is actually soften my selection. Um, to do that, it's really easy. You can do it a couple different ways. You can do refine mask. Um, that's, that's a really good one, and you can save feather, and that will actually feather the selection. This is only in CS5. Um, what we used to have to do before this is select the mask and actually do blur, Gaussian blur and you can see it does a very similar thing. If you have CS5, go to Select Refine Mask. 
it does it a lot nicer nicer here and I'm gonna just soften those edges hit OK click on the little mark and you can see it's a little more subtle it's a little more faint a lot nicer and that's basically colorized you're gonna go through and select every single part of his body um, if you want to select using the quick mask selection you can use your lasso here um, these are kinda cool as well we can add to our selections and subtract that's very important to know um, for instance if I'm selecting the face and let me get my pen tool here and uh, well actually we'll use our lasso tool we, if I hold down my left mouse button I can get the polygon lasso and what I'll do is click this is a good starting point click away here keep clicking and let's say at some point we screw up and we do this boom it's not the end of the world do not worry again this is foolproof you can fix it really easily if I hold my shift key you'll see the little add symbol that hops on and if I hold my alt key or option key you can see there's a subtracting symbol so if I hold add what I can do is continue my path here let's get here and I'm gonna kind of rush through some of this area we can go back and refine that later and if we go back to this point double click you can see it adds it to it we want to subtract a selection hold down option and what we can do is if we're holding down option is we don't want his eyeball to be skin tone right so we'll take that away and when you really get used to this the best method to do is a combination of quick mask lasso tool pen tool adding and subtracting when you can go through all of those different tools and kind of use them together without having to use one versus the other you know you've really mastered this so for instance if I go here and I hit Q you'll notice that drew a quick mask um, then simply I could grab my brush I could switch it to in our case black for a quick mask and I could paint some of the face in so you can really go back and forth through some of these selections here and that makes it really easy for you as the artist to kind of isolate your different selections and really really have them go um, the way you want them to so again let me draw a little bit here and it's good if you don't want to worry about like refine you see how I couldn't really paint that not a big deal we can go ahead and do that later and we can just paint that we want to take away the lips I'm gonna hit X and I'm gonna go in and take away the lips and I'll do it really messily too so you guys can kinda of see what I'm doing I'm gonna hit Q once more and no worries it looks really ugly but I'm gonna do uh, color ready select color ready layer adjustment layer curves call this face and previous layers clipping mask hit OK and there we go now we have a face layer so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna option click on the face and you can see it's really nasty and really messy looking not really the best thing that we've uh, seen so far the lips are coming through though so what I do is I actually I'm gonna put color on it first so I'm gonna go to blue and we're not gonna make him look like he's from Star Trek but we're gonna add some blue you gotta think skin tone has so many different shades no matter what uh, nationality or race you are uh, there's a lot of different tones and shades in human skin tone and we'll do let's do less blue that's starting to come out pretty good maybe add another dot on magenta there we go that's looking pretty decent now you can see areas where it's still gray and whoops to do that uh, to kind of fix that what I'm gonna do is actually just like we did with the buttons uh, white shows up so I'm gonna go in and paint and I'm gonna pick a softer brush here because I want it to kind of blend into one another I'm gonna paint right over those areas there it is 
pretty cool stuff, isn't it? And it's really quick and really easy to use. Again, if you overdo it, hit X. You can see I got some on the background. There we go. And when we're all said and done, hit Alt again, we have a decent mask. And that's basically the process. You're going to go through every little part, all the little parts of his eyes, his eyebrows, his hair, um, the background, his buttons, anything you would have here. And you're going to paint him until he looks like he's in color. So hopefully this has helped. Um, one last step that you probably should do when you're done colorizing, and I suggest this, make a new folder, call it color, color me, whatever you want to call it. Grab all of those. I hold shift and I drag them into their selected folders, close, and this is a nice organized neat Photoshop file that I can go through and I can grade for you and I can tell you know what you're doing because of all these different things. Now you have a lot more layers. You may end up having, depending on your picture, 30, 40, 50 of these layers, but all the process is the same. And one final tip, uh, we mentioned that we use cyan, magenta, and yellow. We didn't touch black. If you ever need to darken or lighten anything, for instance, the shirt, use the CM CMYK layer itself. And you'll notice what that will do is actually darken uh, or lighten the uh, object a little, a little more or less. So that's a cool thing. Do not use the black one. It tends to wash it out. And don't use CM CMYK until the very, very end. Use all the ones, the uh, cyan, magenta, yellow underneath it first. Hopefully this has helped. Uh, you guys should know how to colorize and clean up now. Uh, and good luck with your projects, and I look forward to seeing them.